Kia ora. You've probably done some trigonometry before once upon a time, and maybe a while ago. We're going to run through a bit of a refresher, but this might be of interest even if you are quite comfortable with it, because we might be looking at it in a way that maybe you haven't seen before. We're particularly going to focus on how trigonometry relates to circles, but we will do the triangle stuff as well. Okay, so let's just get started. So when we've got a circle like this, this is the unit circle. So basically this is a circle where it has a radius of one, so this will be a negative a one and negative one on our axes, and zero here. And so let's just mark on a couple more points, 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 here. Now, when we want to mark on an, an angle on our circle like this, so I've drawn a purple line, which sort of goes from the middle of my circle to a certain point on it, and we, when we want to mark on an angle, we measure it anti-clockwise from our positive x-axis. So this is, think of this as being x, and this as being y. So my angle theta here, this is 110 degrees. I've drawn it on. I've got a protractor, for example, drawn my 110 degree angle. And we're interested in knowing what these cosines and sines and tangents are of this angle. Now you can get your calculator out and you can figure it out that way, but it's also really easy to get these values directly from this graph. So cos cosine of an angle is simply the x component of this point up here. So cos theta, let's just make a little note at the top, shall we, is just the x component of our point. So for example, I can see that cosine of 110 degrees, just by looking at my picture here, that looks like about 3 point, negative 3, uh, negative 0 0.34, shall we say. So I can just, just by reading off my picture, I can see that cosine of 110 degrees is around about negative 0 0.34. If I do sine of 110 degrees, well that's just the y component. So again, I can just um, work out sine of my angle theta, sine of 110 degrees, by literally reading off the y component from my graph. So that looks like around about 0 0.94 to me. Um, so I haven't used the calculator at all. All I've done is draw a picture and extract these values off. And finally, tan of the angle theta, well, that's simply equal to um, the slope of this purple line. So tan theta is just the slope. So we could write that as the y value, the rise, divided by the x value, the run, or if you like, as sine theta divided by cosine theta. So I could work out tan of 110 degrees here as approximately, so sine over cosine or y over x, 0 0.94. We're expecting it to be negative because that line is sloping downwards, uh, divided by negative 0 0.34 which tells me that tan of my angle should be around about, let's do that on the calculator, 0 0.94 divided by uh, negative 0 0.34, tells me that tan theta is around about negative 2.8, or negative 2 point, a few more decimal places, but just have one for now. So these values, they're not just magic. I mean, we can get them out of our calculator for sure, um, but they also are literally just numbers that they're just numbers that we can read off this picture. So we always we can always see that our y coordinate, that's sine theta, and our x coordinate, that's cosine of theta. And then tan of theta, like I said, was just the slope of that graph. Okay, so very quickly, um, I'm going to show you how to check that you'll get this from your calculator as well, but when you're using a scientific calculator, it's important that you have it set up in degrees versus radians because there are two different measures for angles. You may or may not know this. Um, and depending on which one your calculator is expecting, you might get something quite different from what you're hoping to get. So I'm just going to check on my calculator that my calculator is in degrees mode. I might post something separately about how to do this um, because it's going to vary from calculator to calculator. But if I type in cos of 110, then hopefully I'll get negative 0.34. So calculator agrees, that's good. And if I type in sine of 110, and hit 
enter, I get 0.936 something. So it's 0 0.94, just what I read off my graph. <coughs> so that's uh, correct as well. And tangent, let's just type in tan of 110 just to complete the picture. Um, I get negative 2.74. Okay, so I'm off by slightly, but hey, we're not being hugely accurate here. Given that we're just working on a graph, that's um, that's really not too bad. So if I calculator tells me it's actually negative 2.74, but you can see that it's kind of close enough. So the point here is that to try and demystify these things a little bit, because they are just numbers that we can read off this picture. There's nothing magical going on in our calculator. It's just figuring that coordinate out for us based on this anti-clockwise angle from our positive x-axis. Now before we move on, it's also worth pointing out that we don't necessarily always go anti-clockwise. If we go the other way, so we know that the orange angle is 110 degrees, we can also specify angles as being negative. And a negative angle just means go clockwise from the x-axis instead of anti-clockwise. So given that there are 360 degrees in a circle, that means this angle would be negative 250 degrees. And that's the same angle as far as cosine and sine and things are concerned. If I were to put cosine of negative 250 degrees into my calculator, I'll get exactly the same thing as cosine of 110 degrees. Okay, so think of negative angles as just rotating the opposite direction. Positive angles anti-clockwise, negative clockwise. Now it's very often we want to go the other way. We want to know, given a value, um, an x or a y coordinate, what is the angle that would give that? So this is called the inverse cosine and sine functions. And they essentially tell us if cosine is equal to a certain value, um, then what is the angle? So that's what, what you understand by this notation here. And what, val what value of theta will give me cosine of that angle equals x? So let's again illustrate it with some examples. So if I have the cosine of theta equals 0 0.6, so we're doing the cosine one first. Remember, cosine is the... Um, is the x-coordinate. So that means I just go to my graph, get a bit of marks and values on here again. So 0 0.6, that is just here on my picture. So if I want to find an angle that gives me a cosine of 0 0.6, then essentially I'm going to get up my ruler and I'm going to draw a line like this. And you can see in this picture, there are actually two possible angles that will give me a cosine of 0 0.6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark them both on. Um, so we go, you can see one of them is going to be up there. And the other one is going to be down here. So I should expect that there will be a positive and a negative value here that come up for this angle. And... This, if I get my protractor out and measure this angle here, um, what I'll get is, I make this one out to be 53 degrees. So I can say that co inverse cosine is 53 degrees or negative 53 degrees. And on my calculator, that's the inverse cosine, the inverse cosine function is the one with the cos and a little negative one. So I can just go, shift cosine of 0 0.6 you can see you type that in there and it tells me that the answer is once again 53 degrees you can see that my calculator only gave me one answer but it matched the one i got which is good so we'll just note that the calculator always gives you a value between 0 and 180 degrees um, so it won't give you the negative one you just have to know that that's there and it might be from for the particular problem you're working on you're expecting that bottom angle here um, you just have to know that that's the case so that would be 53 degrees this would be the negative 53 degree option okay so cosine is the x coordinate is 0 0.6 and i can measure off those two angles which gives me 53 degrees which my calculator agreed with what about the inverse sine of negative 0 0.4 okay let's just clear away the um 
So when it's sine, it's the y value. So negative 0 0.4, that's there. So again, I'll just grab out my ruler and I'll see that it's gonna give me two angles. Both of them are gonna be negative in this particular case. Zero, negative 0 0.4 is there. And so I can see there's two angles from the center are going to be this one and this one. And let's see what those angles are. So again, with the protractor, you have to you may want to check this for yourself. But I measure that as being about negative 24 degrees. Remember, it's negative because it's going in that direction. I get. What about this angle over here? Um, we know that that much is going to be 24. So it will be something like um, 180 degrees, which is this far, plus an additional 24. So that means my angle here if we're having it being positive, would be 204 degrees. So 180 plus 24, so that'd be something like 204 degrees. Or alternatively, it would be, uh, let's see, negative 154 if you want. And again, I'll do it on my calculator. So inverse sine of negative 0 0.4, so shift sine, negative 0 0.4 in brackets, and I get negative 23.57 degrees which is about negative 24. And so just like with our cosine, sine is only going to, inverse sine on the calculator is only going to give you one value. And it's going to give you one between negative 90 and 90 degrees. So the cosine, sorry, the inverse sine will give you an angle between, somewhere between there and there, in this range here. And the corresponding one on this side, you need to figure out yourself if you need it from some kind of symmetry. Okay, what about in inverse tangent? Well, remember the tan of a angle was just the slope of the line that we drew. So if I want to go the inverse tan of two, then I just need to find the angle that gives me a slope of two. So slope of two, that means a rise of a run of two, so it's gonna be across one square up two squares. So it's gonna be something like, Okay, and you can see that there are two possible points that have that slope of two for this uh, here. It's gonna be this one up there and this one down here. So this angle is gonna be, again, I'll get out my ruler again and measure it with the protractor feature, about 64 degrees. <laughs> And you can see the second point is basically that one, plus or minus 180 degrees. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you go plus or minus, um, so just go plus. So this angle here, let's just go minus, shall we? will be 364 minus 180. So that angle is going to be um, negative 116 degrees as my other option. And again, when you do inverse tan on your calculator, so let's just see what we get. Inverse tan of two, I get 63.4 degrees. Okay, so I was off for the decimal place, but that's okay. So on the calculator, it gave me um, 63.4, so let's just say 63 degrees. Um, my point is, this is what these things actually mean. When you actually come to calculate them, obviously you're going to use your calculator to do it. You're not going to draw yourself a picture. But it's useful just to recognize where these things actually come from. There's no great mystery in exactly what these are. So with 10, your calculator, again, will give you an angle between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees, so somewhere in this range. And you get the other one by adding or subtracting 180 degrees uh, if, you, if you need it for whatever reason. Okay, uh, that allows us to have this following useful identity which is that cosine squared plus sine squared of any angle gives you one. So let's just mark on a point and see why this works. All this is is just Pythagoras because we have a triangle here. This side has length sine theta. Negative if it's downwards, but that's fine because when you square it, it's gonna become positive anyway. This side has length cosine theta and because we're on the unit circle, let's put those ones back in, then we know that the hypotenuse has to be one. So this identity, which you may have seen before, is literally just Pythagoras on this unit circle. And it says the, co the square of the two short sides added together is equal to um, the square of the long side. So you could put one squared there if you wanted. It's just Pythagoras. 
Okay, um, so if you want to get from sine to cosine, then you can use this relationship to switch between them. So you may be wondering, how does this relate to what I might have done before with my Sokka Toa and right angled triangles? So let me just see if I can sort of illustrate how this works for you. So the thing that you probably learnt once in the pond time is that if you've got a right angled triangle, like this here, with a side of A, B, and C, actually no, let's, lay the, let's label them the way that you would have done it in class. So this is our angle theta. We called the one that's far away from it the opposite. That's an O, not a zero. This side that's beside the angle, the adjacent, and then we've got the hypotenuse, which is the long side. All right, imagine now that we make a scale model of this triangle. And the way we scale it is we just um, divide all of the sides by H. So we're just going to shrink all of the proportions down so that every side ends up being scaled by a factor of H. This will become H. This will become H, A over H, sorry. And if we divide the hypotenuse by H, we scale it down um, by a factor of H. Then we get this new triangle where the sides are 1, opposite over hypotenuse, and adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, now that we have the hypotenuse of 1, you can see that we could place this on a unit circle. Okay, I may have to do a little bit of tweaking of the scale. Put it there, but it should work. And now you can see that this is just part of my unit circle. So that means adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be cos of theta. That's the car from Sokotoa. That's this one. Um, and this is going to be sine theta. That's the saw from Sokotoa. And what about the tan? Well, the tan is the opposite divided by the adjacent. If you take tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse divided by cos theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. When we divide by a fraction, same thing as multiplying by the fraction the other way up. H's will cancel off and we get opposite over adjacent. That's the Toa part of Sokka Toa. So it all fits together. Um, our, what we know about right angled triangles still applies, but the key point of this video is that we're trying to understand how it relates um, back to this unit circle. Um, cosines and sines trigonometry are intimate re intimately related to the unit circle. And what we're going to get to a bit later in the course is we're going to consider motion where instead of just being theta just being static, we're going to basically have rotational motion where this thing is spinning around at a constant rate. And then we can see how cosine and sine are going to change as just movement backwards and forwards along these axes. Okay, enough for now. We'll see you in the next video. Kakiteano.